Hello, Bruno Marcocchio. You're on the air. Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm sorry to hear about your father. Thank you, Bruno. Um, I wanted to a answer some of the questions that you raised in your preamble. Uh, I, I happen to agree with uh, Roger Grimes. I don't know the man, but I also feel that the independent media is falling down on the job and not asking the obvious questions that are screaming to be asked. Let's talk about some of them, Bruno, so that these can all be uh, things we all hear together as opposed to something just in your mind. Give me, let's start, number one, the number one most pressing question that has not been asked. Well, the first question that w one has to ask is, uh, is Nelcor focused on providing a service for ratepayers in Newfoundland and Labrador or, or merely on increasing their rate base? Well, you see, that's, that's not uh, a question that, but that can't be answered, though, right? That's one of those well, questions it, that can't it, be answered. And you can't. Yeah, I think it can be, Patty, because as you know, 60% of the power is slated not for ratepayers in Newfoundland and Labrador, and you've heard me and others make yes. the argument that even that other 40% is not really necessary because they keep making mistakes on projections, but certainly 60% of it is not for consumption in Newfoundland and Labrador. So the first and most basic question has to be, does this serve the ratepayers? And no one's no one's asking that question. Yes, everyone's everyone's asked it. They say very simply yes. They say very simply that the power is required, and to uh, go about providing power generation opportunities, this is the one selected for all the reasons you've heard. So that's a philosophical one. There's not a documented issue. You can't look in the hearts and minds of folks who investigate stuff. I mean, we can ask things where we can fill out uh, requests for information, and we can ask some things where we can document and compare things they've said in the past with things they say now. But so the investigative journal. Journalists can't do anything about philosophy or hearts and minds uh, of things that we can't find out, any documented proof. You know what I mean. That well, I, I know what you're trying to say, but that's not the case. You've got the case here pretty clearly. You're spending oh. 10, 12, 14 billion dollars on a project that uh, has questionable finances and that 40 percent, 60 percent of the power isn't immediately available to Newfoundlanders. That requires some tough questions. Yeah, so there's no a fact. willing to do that. We're but let, let me move on to number two. Go ahead. We've got 1.5 billion in untendered contracts to LNC Laval and a country, uh, a company in international disgrace that's had its CEO resign and a number of others because of bribery allegations right. to uh, government officials in Pakistan. It seems that where government, where democratic principles and checks and balances aren't into place, LNC Lavalin has a pretty spotty record to say the best. Why is no one asking? Let's have a look at where that 1.5 Everybody is. Everybody has asked. It's a question screaming to be answered. Everyone's running away in the other direction. Why is that, Patty? Everybody's asked. Uh, I have said I'm on the record, and I know you listen to the program all the time. I don't think now, of course, should be above the oversight that we have in any regard in the House of Assembly or any bit of Crown Corporation. We should be able to get what we want, when we want, exactly when we ask for it. But you're it, not, and you're not doing anything about it. Why? What am I going to do about it? I can browbeat somebody. You know what I mean? What, what about what is it that you'd like anyone to do in the form of investigative journalism to ask why? Well, you why, know, why? It, it, you want to sit down for an hour and I can keep you busy for an hour. I don't care about for starters, I don't want to. You're not interested. You're saying you're throwing up your hands and saying $1.5 billion before... Anybody's had a look at the figures? We all think it's wrong. Company that shady. Well, let's look I think it's way. wrong. I don't care what goes on in Pakistan, number one. But uh, I, I think it's wrong. I don't think it could be explained. There is no good answer. Everybody's asked the question. So at that point, once again, how does anyone investigate further than what we've been offered as an answer? Like, what can you do when someone gives you an answer? You can tell them you, you disagree. You think that it's uh, not a complete answer. You think they're politicizing. But then how do you investigate any further? I think you that's a fair say question. You can this is a democracy, and in a democracy, you need some transparency that's right. the point and you have no transparency come on Patty. which we all agree number with three okay number go. three is a royalty trust still on the table for funding this thing uh you know uh, yes or no the only thing on the public records in the, from 2005 indicates yep. that a royalty trust and there's some fundamental questions about is the royalty trust uh, an appropriate mechanism for a project that has a hundred year lifespan. As you know, a royalty trust just arranges the funding, the financing for a project, gets all its money back once they found the funding, and then gets a royalty 
in perpetuity for the length of the project. Right. I would suggest now, Alcor says this is going to run 100 years, then they're going to retool and run it for another 100 years. I would suggest so, the real question there is, is the royalty trust in play? Not all of the philosophy behind it. Is it or is not? And they say no. So at that Why? point, who says no? Uh, the premier says no, and Martin says no. When did your premier say no? I asked the premier. I asked Martin. They both said no. So well, at that you point, you asked the premier. You asked Martin, and he talks out of uh, both sides of his mouth. He and said that no. Raises the next, the next. He point. said no. He said no, but right. he said, continuously says things that contradict each other, and that's the question: Is 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 energy policy in Newfoundland? being driven by Nal and Ed Martin. That is the question that needs the screaming to be asked that none of the independent media are asking is, is the, has Nal become more powerful and more important than the provincial government? Is Ed Martin, who on at the hearing says all of the power must be sold to make the economics work, or Ed Martin that comes on your program and says none of the power has to be sold for the economics to work, and no one asks him any questions. He's not accountable the way politicians are. Is Newfoundland and Labrador being run for the benefit of Nalcor and Ed Martin? Why is no one asking but that? Bruno, question, there, there you go. Listen, I don't mind these these types of questions can actually formulate real questions, but in, in the, the hope for investigative journalism that has been slammed and condemned here in the last couple of days, those aren't questions that can get an answer that's going to satisfy you or me or anybody else. Is Nalcor actually in charge of the provincial government? What kind of and admit but that you're just afraid to ask the question. Afraid of who, so Bruno? It. You got to do. If I'm not now, you I'm can't. Now you ha you're to be credited <laughs> for giving a forum to people like me and others. I do. Who are vocal op opponents? I have no problem make with the it. The distinction between that and doing investigative journalism. They're two things, Patty. But, you, but Bruno, investigative journalism actually means something that has a definition. It does not mean. Let me ask you a philosophical, wishy-washy question of which I can't get an answer to to further infuriate Bruno Marcocchio and others who are opponents of Muskrat Falls. I mean, there's no investigative journalism inside of that, Bruno. There's just not. It doesn't make any sense. And plus, you insinuate that I'm afraid of any of these crowd. I can tell you, knowing that they're all listening, that I couldn't care less. And any, if any of those were real questions, some of those I've asked, then they don't, we don't get an answer. There's not much anybody can do. This is not throwing up your hands, Bruno, but like $1.5 billion in untender contracts, we all know, and to a man and woman, that is wrong. Now, of course, should not be able to hide any of the numbers from anybody ever. That should be the way it goes in, in this province. Investigation is the <laughs> operant word in investigative journalism, no. and I see no investigation. Let me give you another example and a more egregious recent, recent one. Quick, quick. Just after we last spoke, yeah. you had Mr. Flaherty, the Treasury Board pre uh, Chairman, on there. And uh, right after there was some discussion about uh, the loan guarantee, you chose not to ask Flaherty about, whether the, about the nature of the loan Jim guarantee. Jim Flaherty? Yeah. Federal Minister Jim Flaherty? Yeah. I've never spoke to the man in my life. Wasn't he on your program right after we finished the last time we spoke? No, I've actually, I've never, I've never spoke to Jim Flaherty in my life, to be honest with you. Well, uh, you know. I don't, I don't know, the seriously, like, I mean, that's not what I could, uh, I can hide behind. It's, uh, there's a logger for that. I've never spoken about, to the man. about the EI changes from the federal government? I mean, Tony Clement. Tony Clement. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, we spoke to Tony about EI because that was a five-minute chat about uh, and got nowhere with it. And what did you suggest that I ask him about loan guarantees? Well, that would have been a, a good thing to do, to ask about the federal government's commitment to the loan guarantee. And his question about, uh, you, you posed a question about EI. Yeah. And his response was, it'll be different for full-time people. Of course, what I heard, and anyone with a critical mind heard, is that yes, if you're on part-time employment, seasonal employment, you're screwed. What did yeah. you hear? Uh, no, I think that's the case anyway. I think that we have not thought it through. The government has not figured out how it's going to affect seasonal employment, especially in sparsely populated rural pockets of the country. I absolutely think that's true. Nor have they thought how it's going to affect what they pretend to champion, and that's the small businessman. Because if you have a turnover that requires enormous training dollar every year and possibly the inability to get employees, that's an unintended consequence that would make the whole program and the government's intervention completely stupid. Well, 
yeah, it's completely stupid, but it's uh, it's ideological in nature, and the fact that it's stupid is entirely irrelevant to those people. Let me finish with one last Bruno, example. I'll give you 30 seconds, and I'll go, I'm going, okay? So okay. the three five minutes, go ahead. Example. You keep saying that, uh, you know, once it's built, it's uh, you might as well ru run the turbines and produce the power once it's built. And it's kind of, a, again, ba arse backwards, kind of looking at things. But i got to talk to you about the math. If it costs you five cents to run the, the power over the dam, which is about what Nalcor says, five to six cents, yeah. uh, if, uh, if they don't produce any power, yeah. and it costs you 12 cents just to deliver it to New England, by my math, you've saved seven cents by running it over the top of the dam. What kind of math are you doing, Patty? Then that, when that's the case, then I think we should do exactly that. I think we should let the rod run down the dam, run over the dam. Then why the hell are we building it? Bruno, there's no talking to you on any of the front of the map. I mean, well, there's, I, no there's no... I know, logic is, is terribly inconvenient, Patty. Well, you and I, once again, you seem to think that I have my hand on the on the rudder here, but... No, but you're well, not doing the investigative journalism <coughs> that would serve all of the, the all of your listeners, all of the ratepayers, oh, everybody. There are basic oh, questions of democracy yeah. here. And, well, maybe you can ask some of the guys around you who, who can formulate a question to uh, pose itself as investigative journalism, and I, I don't mind asking it. Just like I'm not afraid of you, and I give you an avenue to get on the air and to say whatever you like, and let me say this one more time. To you, and if you insinuate any different next time, you can call Randy. I'm not afraid of Ed or Danny or Kathy or none of them. I got my own life doing great. None of them can hurt me, and I will always endure. I don't give a shit what they think. How's that well, sound? What they think of you is not the issue. The issue is asking them the tough questions. No question problem, to Bruno. Serve Toughest really? guy in town. Ask around, man. Uh, Bruno, once again, I never mind having you on the show. I'm late going to the news, and I apologize for us having to go to the news broadcast a couple minutes late, but call again. All right. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Have man. A nice you too, bye-bye.